Thank you very much for joining me for a review of the miniatures provided with the Aliens vs Predator The Hunt Begins game by Prodos Games. So the latest instalment in uh, the series I've started looking at different manufacturers of science fiction resin models uh, that are currently on the market. So, so far I've done, we've looked at two haven't we, we've looked at Anvil Industries uh, and we've also looked at uh, Grendel Fancy Forge in the last episode. In this episode, we're going to go to a slightly different scale. They're still resin miniatures, they're sci-fi models, uh, and I think this is a good, uh, a good example to look at. And yes, and here we have it. So, uh, Aliens vs Predator, The Hunt Begins. Uh, this has been out a few years now. I think three, maybe four years. Um, it's by Prodos Games. Um, I, just a few quick points on the games. I mean, um, it's it's kind of it's a skirmish war game. It's based on the Mutant Chronicles Warzone rules. So uh, Warzone was kind of like a sci-fi fantasy game from the late nineties, mid to late nineties. Um, yeah, if you ever had any, it had some great artwork, very colourful, imaginative rule books. Uh, lots of artwork by Kev Walker. And uh, yeah, so they ported the rules over onto this. Um, I was looking over at the at Produs's website and uh, I, it made me laugh, and it made me laugh a lot when I read this. Uh, it described Aliens vs Predator The Hunt Begins as a family game. Uh, mm, I don't think I'm going to try and get this one past Mrs. Leaky Cheese under the auspice of being a family game. Yes, face huggers and chest busters. Don't quite think so. So that's a little bit about the game. I think it costs about seventy-five pounds. Now you get a selection. You get a good selection of miniatures in this, uh, and you get the following: you get five colonial marines with a variety of weapons. You get three predators, also with an interesting selection of weapons. Uh, Ten infant aliens, then five alien stalkers. Now the alien stalkers are roughly equivalent to the alien from a nineteen seventy-nine film of the same name. The infant aliens um, are a bit funny. They're a little bit like the alien from Alien 3, but they're smaller. Obviously, the alien in Alien 3 was a full-sized alien, but I guess their quadruped nature is the nearest comparison I can draw there. So, yeah, so that's the miniatures we get. They're all resin models. Uh, and let's have a, so let's have a look at them. So I'll, they come in this box, stamped AVP, The Hunt Begins, a bit like Wayland Utani badge for those of you who know the film. I've borrowed this game, uh, been lent this game by uh, a friend of mine, the dude, as I'll call him, Big Lebowski style. Uh, so this looks like a way in. Let's see what we've got. Now he's he's done some assembly work on this but not uh, not that much. So and what he has done is he's assembled his predators. So I'll get those out. We'll be careful because these are very fine models. And then we get a, a whole bunch of parts and some bases. I don't know what the scale is. Maybe this is 32mm. Of course, the Predators are uh, much larger in stature than humans. So what do you get? Well, you get three Predators. Um, the infant aliens and then the alien stalkers. So we've got a load of bits. So what shall we look at first? Um, let's begin by taking a look at the predators as they're assembled. So what I'm interested, so you know what we've been looking at so far, what's the casting quality like on these? Now this is a licensed game, so Prodos had to get the had to go through the licensing process with 20th Century Fox to produce this game. So I'm mean, expecting a certain level of quality to go with that from the point of view of brand protection. Uh, and I think we can say, looking at these guys, that is certainly the case because the the detailing on these is very good. It's a little bit of a got a little bit of mold on there, but very. I mean, that'll be very easy to remove with a scalpel. A little bit there. Great detail on this. This predator here is armed with a plasma caster, so the um, signature weapon from the original Schwarzenegger film. But yeah, very delicate, very fine, delicate details on the hands.
and probably comparing to Forge World, finer detailing than we would normally see on their models. They tend to not go for quite such delicate details as these. So it feels quite strong, but that is, you'd have to be careful with that. But it looks very good. Let's have a look at the next one. So this guy is armed with the discus. So this was featured in the Predator 2 film. Those of you who've watched it might remember the famous scene at the Red Wing uh, meat packing, meat processing company. It's a bit of flash is not removed on that, but yeah, you can, but it's very finely detailed, goodness me. But when you're looking at the quality on these, look at these, look at these van braces with these skull designs, wow. You could do some use those for demon conversions or chaos warrior or chaos marine conversions those would be great Ooh, trophy there a human skull but yeah very nice looking again a little bit of a mold i think that uh, it's a slight mold slip isn't it you can see the displacement there's a slight bit of displacement but that is recoverable that's not um not terrible at all. And I wouldn't I wouldn't be bothered if I got a model like that in terms of removing that. But very faithful reproductions of the film characters. Uh, and then we have a predator armed with the who I can't remember what this is called. It's like the telescoping spear. Now this is super fragile, this one. Uh, and actually when we were when my mate was packing this up to bring over the end of this spear got pinged off so in return for him lending me the game I've uh, pinned that back in place this evening and that was a even for me that was a tricky pin that was but it looks good but yeah look at that look at the detail on the face of this let me uh, raise the camera just a touch and we've got the full mandible teeth selection that the predators are uh, well known for when they decide they don't need their helmet and they've got the wrist blades as well and a variety of trophies from various unfortunate creatures who've been hunted by this chap very well cast very sharp detailing i mean they they kind of got quite a smooth form and i guess that's because these are well these are taken from the film so therefore they're quite smooth as the actual actors were. So what should we look at now? Shall we? Let's um let's move away from the Xenos for a moment and let's look at the uh at the colonial marines. So well gosh look at these. So here we've got some more chunky detail. With the arm, and these are—I mean, these are these are very faithful reproductions of the film. A little bit of a, a little bit, teens bit of slippage down there again. Look at the detail on these uh, shoulder lights. It's very precise. And the band, the ammunition, the grenades on the uh, bandolier. I have to give it to them. They. Uh, did a fantastic job of reproducing the Colonial Marines from the film and all their equipment. Let's have a look at this guy next. So, oh yeah, this, this guy's running. So, uh, oh yeah, don't know if you can quite make that out, but that's got uh, a cross on it, so... This is a medic, and I'm wondering if this is, this might be, this looks a little bit like Dietrich, the female, one of the female Marines from the film. A little bit of a, bit of stuff, mold line, bit, slip, bit of slippage again there between the legs. Not too bad though. It's in a place where it's not going to really show once it's removed, but you know, there's a bit of work to do there. It's not not perfect but I think across the details where it counts the casting 
Uh, looks great to me. Who's next? There we go. So now here we have the smart gunner, which is might be Drake, the uh, film, or of course the famous Vasquez. And they've got these uh, shoulder-mounted lights, and he's got the targeting a ray over one eye. You know, and, and faithful to Drake is where he's got his reversed cap on. Different style of armor as the smart gun has had in the film, but yeah, that's great. A couple more Marines to go. This looks similar to the first Marine again. A little bit, a little bit of stuff to remove there, a little bit of slippage. Very little, no air bubbles yet, and, hard, and hardly any flash at all. There's little bits of flash, but flash is dead easy to remove, so I never really, never see, never really bothers me that much. Unless I suppose if you had a, an enormous amount of it, then it might be a problem. But yeah, and then the final marine. Hmm, looks great. We'll have a look at a couple of weapons. So let's start off with a smart gun. It's great. I've seen one of these. At a, uh, I went to an event, a Halloween event at the National Space Centre in the UK, um, an aliens night, and I had lots of props. And one of the props was the one of the smart guns from the film, which was neat to see. It had all sorts of original props. It was very cool. Yeah, very, very faithful reproduction. And let's have a look. So all the other guys, oh, we've got one incinerator. Or flame unit. Yeah, looks great. Fine detailing. I mean, these are very realistically proportioned and cast miniatures, and you know, they're, they're not, um, they're not, they're not really fancy, are they? And there's one of the M41A pulse rifles. Yeah, looks good. So yeah, they all look very nice. Now let's move on to some of our favorite Geiger-esque drooling horrors, the Xenomorphs. So let's start by having a look at a couple of the uh, infant aliens. Decent amount of flexibility now. I we chatted with the guys who a couple of guys from the company because they were at this Aliens versus Predator night, and they were telling us how they use different type consistencies of resin for different models. And these guys and the things like these they use a slightly different consistency consistency of material for these parts to get give them more flexibility and uh, durability, which I thought was quite an interesting thing to use different. Resin materials, yeah. He looks suitably terrifying and uh, suitably well cast as well. There are little bits of little bits of mold line and stuff to take off, but in general they look really good. The mold lines they've they've put position in such a way that they don't seem to run across key details like the alien's face uh, and head, the bit of fam the fam infamous banana head. Ooh. Yeah, there we have it. It's good old inner striking jaws. I guess you uh, if you bought this game, these guys would uh, work quite nicely. In quite, quite in a quite a versatile way, if you had a Tyranid army, uh, you could quite quite easily slot them in as some sort of biomorph to bulk up your numbers. Because you know, I guess if you're a Tyranid player, you can uh, never have enough beasties. 
just in the same way that when you're filming with these, you can never have enough focus, which I'm struggling with on this part. There we go. Good. Uh, look at that. Now I thought, I thought that was a mold line, but I actually think it's it's part of a design. It's like a vein, actually. So, the, so what I thought might be the mold line is actually, I think, part of the miniature on the other one. So yeah, yeah very good. Uh, and then finally, let's move on to the fully grown, or well, more fully grown xenomorphs, the stalkers. So these are pretty much straight reproductions of the alien from the 1979 film. So these are more complex models. Let's start off by looking at the torso assembly. So you've got the, yeah, it has these developed horns on the back. Bits of, you've got some flash to remove there. It's a bit more cleanup required on this, but look at the, um, look at the depth of detail on the pose on that. That's very good. And here we have an example of a part. Um, these tails are cast using a more flexible resin material, which is a very clever idea to, because he's very delicate, but he, as you can see here, this has got a good amount of flexibility in it. Bit of clean up there. I mean, I suppose one of the things as well, you can probably get away with a bit less clean up on these because they're so, the way the detail works in these, and because the paint scheme is predominantly dark gray and black, you probably get away with a bit more. Now that, the flash here, this is going to be a bit harder work to remove. There's a bit, there's definitely more work to do there than we've seen on some of the, on the other models. But that said, um, perfect loan, perfect mold alignment consistent through these. I mean, you know, the, it's easy enough to take away some flash, but you mold slips are a nuisance. So we'll look at another torso. That's where the tail attaches. Oops. I had an interesting discussion with the guy there who was a, obviously uh, the guy from Prodos Games who was one of the technical guys on the mold, on the molding. We had a discussion around forge or molding, which was uh, interesting to get his viewpoints. He wasn't um, he wasn't very impressed by their quality control, although he did, you know, freely admitted. He said he, he did. He loved their products, and he had a. I think it was an ultrine army. So, and let's uh, let's have a look at a xenomorph head. Hmm, almost as a case. Oh, oh. oh. Is a camera too afraid, afraid to focus? There you go. Ooh, gosh, yep. Yeah. That's even at that small size. That's looking pretty malevolent. It's got the big post and he's taken off, but you can kind of get a feel for how these look good these look and these are amazing reproductions absolutely incredible reproductions of the xenomorph from the film let's see if we've got a mouth with some inner striking jaws activated oh come on camera you know you want to focus there we go and yeah Turn it on its head, so let's get this right. So turn it on its head, and you can kind of imagine the scene in Alien where, actually let's get it like that, there you go. Imagine the scene in Alien where Ripley has just got to the, just got to the Narcissus and escaped the exploding Nostromo and then only to find her favorite Xenomorph has accompanied her. You can imagine it's sleeping there, testing its jaws out. Or perhaps um, 
Brett's last moment, shall we say. But yeah, excellent miniatures. So yeah, um, well, there you go. There's a bit of a, there's a look at uh, another manufacturer's resin model. So those, uh, in, yeah, are interesting. I mean, very impressed by the quality of the reproduction of the subject matter on those. It's, um, it's very impressive indeed. Um, and you know the mold the production looks really good as well i mean um there's a few mold lines and minor mold slips to remove some flash to take away um but no, but no show stoppers at all and there's no no air bubbling at all that i saw in the monks a lot so uh yeah they would have to get um definitely have to get 10 out of 10 for quality so yeah i hope you've enjoyed that uh, a brief overview of the um resin miniatures from Aliens vs Predator Prodos games. Interestingly, uh, before I uh, made this video, I was looking on my website and uh, I found a model there, which I'm debating getting now, uh, and that is a Cheyenne dropship, so the uh, Colonial Marines dropship. And it's a 28, you know, it's true scale, so it's, um, it's about 40, just over 40 centimeters long, uh, or probably about 13 or 14 inches uh, for you guys stateside. Um, but yeah, so they sell that for 150 pounds, which doesn't look actually too bad a price. It's a, they're all made to order, so hmm, I might get that. So I was uh, I was wanting a good resin vehicle to compare, you know, a large resin vehicle for the purposes of comparison. So yeah, I might get that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this review, and I'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.